Hey everyone, Reflected here, and today I'd like to tell you about a massive, massive update that's coming soon to my campaigns, FLAC. Let me explain where it's all coming from. A year ago, ED implemented the X-ray damage modeling for Warbirds, which was a total game changer, a great addition, but they forgot to adjust the FLAC. While the accuracy and the burst explosion size worked okay with the old DM, it was absolutely lethal, impossible to survive like a laser beam of death with the new DM, taking out all the fun from World War II missions. I implemented some workarounds, but my hands were tied and ultimately it was up to ED to solve this issue, which they finally did. On one hand, they reduced the size of the explosion. Until now, a single burst could damage two, three aircraft in the same formation at the same time. That was totally nonsense. If bursts were that heavy, this would have been impossible in real life. The other anomaly was the accuracy. Before, Fleck was fairly accurate without a KDO or Commando Gerät 40 and absolutely sniper when you added it to the group. It was an optical aiming system implemented in 1942, I think that greatly increased the accuracy of flag batteries. So before the flag was fixed, I removed this from all my flag groups. However, now flag only fires if there's a KDO-40 in the group. Without it, they only fire in self-defense, so I had to add them to each battery now. Accuracy seems quite plausible too. Additionally, I did some research on the composition of flag batteries, how many guns they had, what kind, and how were these spread out location-wise. I learned that in my missions I used small amounts of heavy flag but spread evenly all over France. This was wrong. After this update, heavy flag is now more concentrated around big cities. So on one hand you'll have larger gaps between heavy flag areas, on the other hand Entering one is a very bad decision because you'll be welcomed by a much higher concentration of fire. Also, it turns out that I almost completely ignored light flag before. I was amazed how much light flag was around in real life and not just near big cities. Batteries of up to 12 guns each. So what I did was that I created a template for both Normandy and the channel map with all the flak units. This is the channel map template. Of course, it would completely kill performance, so only a fraction of these would be present in a given mission. I'd load the template, then delete most of the units, you know, in areas where the player would probably not fly. ED also added the option to limit the engagement altitudes for flak units. So I added minimum and maximum altitudes where it made sense. For example, sometimes they wouldn't engage a small formation of fighters flying above a layer of overcast, but when you drop below cloud base, they would open fire. I also made the flak stop firing when there's a big dogfight going on so that they won't shoot at friendlies. It all depends on the mission and the situation. So what does it mean for you, the player? Avoid overflying big cities, and if you must, do it at high altitudes, like above 15 to 20,000 feet or really low, down on the deck. Be aware that you can be shot at by life flag anywhere below like 8, 10,000 feet, just like in real life. So if you get lower than that, be fast and never fly in a straight line. If you go low, go really low, and I don't mean 1,000 feet or 500 feet, you need to be able to see the terror in the eyes of the squirrels on the trees, that kind of low. If you fail to keep this in mind, you will be shut down, and you'll deserve it. Ground attack and airfield strafing missions were considered the most dangerous and terrifying in real life. And now it will be the case in my campaigns too. However, it's not sniper heavy flak you need to be afraid of anymore, but dozens of lighter guns. The good news is that now you can do something about it. If you stay fast and low, masked by trees and buildings, and keep jinking around, you'll be safe. If not, you can think about your mistake in Stalag Luft 3 while digging the escape tunnel under the stove. So my advice is, as always, fly smart, roleplay, 
pretend that you're a pilot in 1944 who wants to survive the war instead of just chasing glory in a computer game. After this update, I believe my missions have become a lot more realistic. Just as dangerous as before, but survival lies more in the hand of the player now. I did not only rework all the flak in every mission, but I also retested most of them, and I'm telling you, they reflect what I've read in all those World War II personal accounts much better now. I dedicated the last couple of weeks to this, and it should be available for you in the next open beta update. It was a tremendous work, with nearly a hundred missions to redo, hundreds of flak units in each, but I believe it was worth the effort, and now my campaigns are exactly as I want them to be. The ultimate, most realistic historical context that you can fly these beautiful warbirds in. Not for those who want a quick and fun fight, but for those who are interested in experiencing what it must have been like back then. I want to reenact events that they've read about in all those books. I am now working on the flak in my upcoming mosquito campaign, which is going to be a real blast. Pun intended. Stay tuned for further updates and don't forget to subscribe. See ya!